This is the main data met of application. Our analyst, in this case, is interested in studying the U.S. Census data from 2000, more specifically the housing information. In this case, he chooses the Vermont data, and the information is then resulting in our first data rows, a database rows in this case. The year the house was built, the number of rooms in the house, the number of bedrooms, the, the amount of acres connected to the house, the value of the house, and the income of the owners of the house connected to the thing. Now, he wants to start building a visual query. And this is done by creating the iterative refinement roses. One for the filtering, we call it appropriately, and one for the result of the filter, we call that appropriately too. These data roses represent multidimensional data on all of these axes. Now, in many cases, it can be interesting to be able to compare the results in our filter data set to the original data set. So we will create a bar chart for you to do this. And we simply connect the two data sets to this one, and we get a visual indication of the relative sizes. He might grab one of the handles, for instance, for the value of a house, change it and see how it results in, in the distribution of the, and the average and minimum and maximum values for the data rows, as well as the, the size ratio between the, the starting point and our result. So he's, he might change some aspects. These are the dynamic query uh, handles that he's moving to change the filters in order to get a feeling for the data set. For instance, it might be interesting to look at how the value of a house influences the number of bedrooms. And it's pretty obvious this is the bedroom axis. As we increase the, num the value of the house, we get more bedroom. Another interesting thing to look at is uh, the, the annual income of the people living in a house. So we've increased dynamic query to get a high income uh, people and then we can immediately see the results of this obviously the value of the house is increasing now let's say that our analyst is interested in in studying some other aspects of of that and then he can create another branch of visual queries side by side where he can explore other things and now be able to study other aspects So, after having built this second query and label it appropriately, then he has the idea that maybe it would be interesting to cross these two branches. The first one where we looked at the value, the other one where we looked at acres, and see if there is something in common. Here, an intersection rose is useful. The others that we've been dealing with so far are union roses, which means that all of the input dependencies will be added to to the rows, whereas for an intersection, you get the intersection between the two sets. So we simply connect our first visual query with our second, and we get the intersection of the two. That is, the houses in the first branch that also exist in the second branch. And uh, we might be able to, we might be interested to connect this to the bar chart viewer to see the size ratio of the two. And we can play with the dynamic queries to see the, the results update in real time. And in that way, you'll be able to play with the data. One of the strengths of the data meta approach is the ability to, to load several data sets onto the same canvas and be able to compare them side by side. In this case, we've loaded the Vermont data set from before, as well as the New York data set. We can also look at something in particular, like, like looking at the number of persons living in a house for Vermont, and then I have the same approximate settings for New York. And again, pretty attentively, we can see there's a difference between these two if you compare them side by side. 